Good morning, folks. We've got several items to hit today and a full rundown of space weather as well. You may be able to notice how active some of the solar regions are, even without major flaring activity or Earth-directed CMEs. This is 304 angstroms of UV light from ionized helium showing those plasma motions, but we go to 193 angstroms of ionized iron here. The plasma filaments are snappy. The active regions across the north are having surges as well, but we are without even M-class flare events here and a little break from the inclement space weather. The 5.9 month cycle of activity isn't expected to kick back in for a few weeks, so hopefully we can enjoy this reprieve from the enhancement on our star, but we will be monitoring those filaments and the new active region incoming on the south. Over the next week, several of the larger spots that previously turned out of view could be coming back around and will be the primary item we're watching for over the coming days. First up in the articles, this one confirmed for about the hundredth time that geomagnetic field precursors to larger seismic events are real. The pre-earthquake signal science began with total electron content and other particle signatures in the atmosphere, but has definitively expanded over the last several years to include reliable signals from Earth's magnetic field. Still waiting on a robust real-time global alert system based on all of these. But taking these concepts a bit further, a fascinating paper here on how the electromagnetic forces from the Sun control seismic activity not just on Earth, but on Mars and the Moon. The records that do exist for all three were compared to the Riger periods well known to exist with the Sun, and this is a fantastic confirmation of all those previous hypotheses with a bit more on a potential mechanism well played. Stepping to the satellite game here, folks, there's still no signal from ICON. At this point, we really have to imagine it was indeed broken during that minor geomagnetic event when it failed to respond a couple months ago. And in that same vein, they're having problems with Juno now too. For the second time, an anomalous temperature spike as the craft near Jupiter has degraded performance and corrupted data. Electromagnetic interactions are a great candidate for this corruption. The last time was just a few days ago and was much more extreme than the first instance. Between these and the Chinese rover failing to respond, we're now starting to see a solar system-wide struggle of scientific instruments. One hopes it's just a coincidence and not a signal of more rapid changes at the planets in the ongoing solar system shift, although that is precisely what we would be expecting eventually. Don't forget to book your tickets for our Blitz Tour coming in a few months. Tickets are available in the description box below the video along with links to all of our other resources and also the one-on-one -on -one calls with me. The February availability has been set and updated for those who have been waiting. We greatly appreciate your support. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 4.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.